In this video, we're going to look at the importance of starting to save early and show you how just saving a small amount, little and often, can really add up over the longer term and help you on your way to becoming a pension millionaire. Without sounding like a life coach, as with many things in life, the best time to start saving and investing is years ago, and the second best time is today. This is because the earlier you start to save your money and invest it, the more time it has to grow and the longer it can benefit from something called compound interest growth, which Albert Einstein famously referred to as the eighth wonder of the world. Compound interest is based on the initial sum plus any accrued growth in the past. It's for this reason why compound interest growth for both investing and other aspects of your life can lead to exponential results over time. In this example, we're going to run three different scenarios for three different people who have different approaches to life and savings in general. We're going to assume that underlying retirement accounts grow by 7% a year and their retirement age is set at 65. Firstly, we've got Steady Sally, who's a steady eddy and balances the risk of saving for, for tomorrow and living for today. She starts investing 5000 per year from age 21 and does this for 15 years. She makes no further contributions beyond this age and the money's left invested until that retirement of 65. This means she's invested a total of 75k. Next, we've got Dave the Rave, on the other hand, who's very much live and let live. He spent the last 10 years living it up in Southeast Asia. He came back to the UK and he doesn't start saving into a pension until age 31 and contributes a total of 5k a year up to 65, so from 31 to 65. He's invested a total of 170k. Finally, we've got Terry, the accountant, who is the most diligent when it comes to retirement planning as his own nature is as a bean counter. He focused on his retirement planning as soon as he entered the workforce and invested 5k a year from 21 right through to his retirement age of 65. So he's invested a total of 220k. The retirement savings when they retire at age 65 can be seen on the screen now. What highlights the power of compound interest is that although Dave the Rave has saved almost 100k more than Steady Sally, her retirement account is over 270k more than Dave's. By saving just 75,000 during her lifetime, she would have invested her way to almost a £1 million pension pot. At this stage, you're probably wondering which character you are in the story. Are you Dave the Rave or Terry the Accountant or maybe somewhere in the middle? Of course, the Goldilocks situation would be to act as Terry had done, who had accumulated a pension of almost £1.5 million. If you start saving early and are consistent with it, the slow and steady or watching the paint dry approach to investing can lead to huge amounts of wealth and even put you on your way to well becoming a pension millionaire. A 7% return seems fairly reasonable when you consider an index made up of the global stock market has done over 10% a year since the 80s or so. At the risk of sounding like a boomer or Kirsty Alsop from location, 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 who made headlines for the wrong reasons when claiming young people could get on the property ladder sooner if they just cancel the Netflix subscriptions. If you're just starting out in the workforce or you're in, in the middle of your career, it can seem tempting to disregard your own retirement savings and planning or even opt out entirely out of your auto enrollment pension provider with the cost of living rising, the difficulty of saving for a house deposit in retirement seeming so far away. But as we've seen, by just saving a small amount, little and often, this can have huge effects. If you're enjoying the video and you want more help and more videos around your retirement planning, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. A good rule of thumb to gauge the power of compound interest is to use the rule of 72. So if you take 72 and divide this by the expected return on your investments, this is roughly how many years it will take you to double your money. For example, if we assume global stocks grow around 10% a year to make it easy, as they've done in the past, this means your money will double every seven years. So how much would you be saving for retirement? Well, there's no silver bullet when it comes to working out how much you should be saving. It's going to depend on many things such as what retirement income you want, when you want to retire, and how long you're potentially going to be retired for and drawing from your investments. A Fidelity study looked at what you'd need to save for a comfortable retirement, 
depending on what age you started saving for a time. And you can see the results on the screen now. I know what you could say, Alex. How am I meant to save 13% of my income? Inflation and my increased mortgage have me on the baked beans diet. Don't forget that if you're enrolled into your workplace pension, then both you and your employer will be contributing as a minimum 8% to it. 5% comes from you personally with 3% from your employer. So even with that, you're well over halfway if you fall into that age, 20 to 35 age bracket. One thing that I've done in the past is that when I receive any expenses such as mileage from work, I'd pay this immediately back into my pension. You could also do this if you're uh, lucky enough to receive a bonus and you not only going to boost your retirement plot, but if you do this through salary sacrifice, the contribution can be very tax efficient as it will be free from income tax and national insurance. This is particularly useful if you're straddling the higher rate or additional rate tax threshold or you have income over 100000 Who doesn't like paying less tax, right? It's good practice to be aware of exactly how much your employer contributes to your pension and you should bear this in mind when weighing up job offers as some employees will pay significantly more than this. The most I've ever seen personally was a client's employer from an old DB scheme that had become a DC scheme and they were paying 20%. Even with a modest salary, if you kept this up for 30 odd years and investment returns were as they've been in the past, you'd be well on your way to becoming a pension millionaire. I had a thought. When starting out investing, the biggest thing that can move the needle is simply saving more. I've mentioned saving and investing any expenses you may get and also any bonuses or uh, overtime. You should check with your employer if they're going to match your pension contributions as some employers will do this. When weighing up job offers, think, have a think about pension contributions and don't just focus on the headline salary rate. If you save into a pension, you're going to benefit from tax relief, which I've talked about in another video, which can turbocharge your retirement savings. Although you're not going to be able to access a pension until age 55 at the earliest, which is set to increase. I actually don't think this is a bad thing. I think this Ill illiquidity is a good thing as it keeps the money invested and come what may, you can't access or raid the funds for a holiday, which can be tempting if it's in a ISA, for example, speaking for myself anyway. Within your workplace pension that you save into, oftentimes you're going to be invested in the scheme's default fund, which could be classed as a balanced fund and may be invested in defensive asset classes that it caters for all members, no matter what stage of life they're at. So those closer to, to retirement as well as those just starting out. You could argue if you've got the risk appetite, you're comfortable with investment risk and volatility. You could argue you can afford to take more investment risk. Eking out an additional 1% return can make a huge difference over 20 to 30 years thanks to compound interest. For example, if John had 30k saved and he was contributing 6k a year for 30 years and his investments grew at 6%, his final fund would be over 675k. If he was to eke out just a 1% return on top of that 6%, this would generate an additional 159k. In short, no, you won't be resigned to the poor house. However, if you're older and closer to your retirement age, then this may mean you have to save more as your funds have less time to benefit from this beautiful compound interest growth. If you've been employed in the past, then it's likely you're going to have made some national insurance contributions and you'll qualify for at least some form of state pension. To qualify for the new full state pension, you're going to need to have made 35 qualifying years. However, if you've got less than this, this doesn't mean you don't get any state pension at all. It just means it could be reduced. The full state pension works out at £10,600 a year. And the state pension age is currently 66, although this is also due to rise to 67. If both you and your partner, if you've got one, receive the full state pension, well, this alone could come to nearly £21,200. The retirement living standards found that for a couple wanting to enjoy a minimum and moderate retirement, you'd need an income of £19,934,000 respectively. If you both receive the full state pensions, this alone can help cover the bulk of this. And if you're able to save even just a small amount into a private pension, this can supplement your income and be extremely helpful. Now, 
it's all well and good knowing the importance of compound interest, but it counts for very little of you have simply no idea how much you should have saved for retirement and what your number is going to be before you can pull the trigger and retire. So have a look at this video of mine, which I've done before, which looks at how much you need to have saved for a time and to live your on track to reach your goals.